Hello world, it's Vagaman here. We are in southern Turkey right now in the town of Tashadju. And uh, that's the beginning of my video about visiting Northern Cyprus, or basically the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Sort of the unrecognized state, or rather say partially recognized country. Uh, it's only recognized by Turkey. And effectively, this is the occupied territory of Cyprus occupied by Turkey. Northern Cyprus is controlled by a uh, Turkish-imposed government and the Southern Cyprus is a regular kind of country uh, that requires a Schengen visa or its local visa to win. There is a sea port behind this fence, the starting point of the ferry boat that departs at midnight today. So I have something like six hours to check in. At first, I have to find an office of this ferry company. So either print my ticket there or check in straight in their office. Tashadju is a tiny town in southern Turkey, in Mersin region. Really good area in terms of the climate. Here is a Mediterranean climate. It's so warm even in late November. Already have already found the office of the ferry company. Let's check in here. I have successfully checked in and in the office they gave me this special paper for stamps. So not to put stamps in my travel passport and that's why I asked them for this special paper. The time is 8.30 p.m. It's still three hours prior to departure of the boat. Uh, but there is nothing to do in Tashadju actually aside from eating in restaurants and cafeterias. Um, that's why I decided to go straight to the port. Here it is. So I have already crossed the border and uh, got my passport stamped uh, in Turkey. But uh, when I finally end up in Northern Cyprus, they will stamp the paper that it was given uh, at a uh, ferry agency. The ferry has accidentally appeared through marine darkness. So it seems that the ferry just kind of uh, arrives in Turkey and then goes back almost instantly and spends the whole day in Cyprus. All right, the ticket have been checked. Let's go straight to the ferry. So this is the hall for passengers. There is quite a lot of seats and I'm almost sure that not all of them will be occupied today. It's 1 a.m. in Turkey and one hour ago we were about to depart, but for some reasons we haven't done it yet. So the process of boarding of passenger seems to be completed and now they try to board some vehicles. The departure of this ferry boat was delayed for three hours and now the local time is 6.35 a.m. And as you can see it's still completely dark in Mediterranean Sea. So this is the place for cars and trucks. And this is the zone for passengers, basically. This is how the city of Girne looks from the ferry. Seems that it's advantageous to be the first one who get off this boat, probably because of the line at border control. So the disembarking has gone well. Now we are walking towards the border control down the territory of the sea port. This is our ferry boat. Congratulations, guys. I'm officially at Northern Cyprus. They stamped this piece of paper. Technically, I'm allowed to stay here as long as I can stay in Turkey. So the first aspect that attracts your attention here at Northern Cyprus is a left side driving that was inherited from England because Cyprus is a former English colony. So when it comes to license plates at Northern Cyprus, uh, the plates are more or less same as in Turkey with the only difference that here is no sign of Turkey like these TR letters in the left and also there is no region marked. So my first impressions about Girne and Northern Cyprus in general is that it's not that bad. Look at the architecture, look at the conditions of building. 
it's pretty dope I would say way better than in Abkhazia not a same recognized state that borders Russia for instance so in terms of the language there are obviously some differences with continental part of Turkey because English language is way more common here on southern Cyprus there are some territories that are controlled by United Kingdom that officially relate to United Kingdom there is not that much places of interest in Girne however the major the main one is Girne castle the one that I'm approaching right now uh, following this path in this wonderful park so here is the castle of Girne also known as Kyrenia Castle. Kyrenia is a Greek name of this settlement. The panoramic viewpoint in the castle is probably the best in Girne. You can see the harbor with the boats, vessels and yachts here. Uh, the city is quite sprawling. It's going straight there to the bottom of the mountain. It's high time to buy some groceries. Let's test local supermarkets. So the assortment of goods here at Northern Cyprus is more or less the same as in Turkey. Prices are also the same. And one of the major differences is that they sell alcohol here in grocery stores, unlike in Turkey. Actually, I was wrong saying that prices here are almost the same as in Turkey. They actually higher. I noticed it by these cookies. They usually cost something like eight liras in mainland of Turkey. Here they cost twelve. Like these cookies cost 35 uh, against 17 in mainland of Turkey. Well, basically all of the groceries here are delivered via Turkey because of some embargoes and economic sanctions imposed on Northern Cyprus. It also affects prices negatively, obviously. Congrats me guys, I made it to western part of northern Cyprus to explore one of the abandoned harbors. Formerly in the past it had a railway connection with the copper mine that operated during British colonial time, colonial period. There is not that much abandoned places aside from this harbor and aside from this car. So in the past it was the transshipment point of copper. Most likely it was delivered here by narrow gauge trains and then copper switched to this kind of a line. We are walking the toxic soil of northern Cyprus. And this line uh, transport copper on approximately hundreds of meters deeper to the sea and there was sort of a place uh, where it was transshipped into ships well i made it to the top of the line but there is not that much interesting stuff to film aside from the conveyor itself i have found the only train that has been preserved here at northern cyprus it operated on copper mine and transferred copper to here to this small harbor and this train was British because Cyprus formerly was a British colony and then Cyprus became independent British suspended the operation of their mine here this is the interior of the cap or rather say something that has remained after that this is the control panel some original signs in English and here is the engine these are the wagons inside this is a combination of a gondola and hopper so Visually it reminds us of gondolas, but technically it's a hopper with this bottom in the form of three angels. As a bonus to the abandoned train, there is an abandoned vessel, by the way, right in front of the train. Good morning from Nicosia, or it is also called Lefkosia. This is the capital city of both Cyprus, northern and ordinary one. It's morning in Turkish part of Nicosia, the capital city of Cyprus. And it's quite busy, I see a lot of people and cars going for work probably. So it's going to be a short overview of the city center of the downtown with some of historical heritage and then we move to eastern part of northern Cyprus. The historical heritage of the area can be understood by walking down the streets of capital cities like here in Nicosia slash Lefkosia. However, a number of buildings here are dilapidated and abandoned I'm not sure how the situation is on Greek side of the island, but at Turkish part there is quite a lot of this abandonment. You have been detected. 
So there is a buffer zone between Greek and Turkish parts of Nicosia. And here it is. These abandoned constructions are now on the territory of this uh, sort of a buffer zone. And it's not like a concrete wall or just a fence with barbed wire. It's a piece of the territory which does not relate neither to a Turkish nor to Greek part of Cyprus and it's kind of neutral. The entrance is prohibited, filming is prohibited, blah blah blah. But anyway, I'm so curious about this balcony and this particular apartment because it's technically located in this buffer zone and I wonder if it's inhabited or not. Well, according to the general appearance of this balcony, it seems to be inhabited, but there I see some sort of ruins of the wall. So perhaps they just created the appearance that it's inhabited, but in fact it's not. Who knows? Да, такое ощущение, что гуляешь по городу призраку. Хотя сегодня в город призрак мы еще съездим. Вот стоит закрытый ресторан. И что интересно, с противоположной стороны ресторан тоже закрыт. Сюда вот тоже можно просочиться и посмотреть на интерьер. All right, so we have got to this sort of the border between Greek and Turkish parts of the island. The actual border crossing is behind me. This is the pedestrian crossing on Ledra Street. This is the St. Catherine Church constructed in 14th century. And as you can see, Turks uh, turn it into a mosque. All right, I've changed the location and now I'm in the west of northern Cyprus in the town of Famagusta, also known as just Magusta. Here is probably the most well-known abandoned location on the whole island of Cyprus, which is called Varosha. This is the former Greek district of this city and the Greeks were forced to leave it during the occupation of this territory in 1974. So. Aside from this district, the city is quite livable, so there is a university, quite a lot of students. In front of the building of the former train station is locomotive number one. This was the first imported locomotive to Cyprus. It was uh, used both in construction process and in regular service afterwards. So I have made it to the abandoned part of the Famagusta. There is Marosha. Look at that. It's all closed and abandoned. And it kind of borders the inhabited part of the city. There was sort of the checkpoint. I asked the guard if it's possible to get through there. He said no, but it must be possible to access that area through another road that goes sort of the, around this district. A part of Arosha was opened for tourists in 2020, so just two years ago, for the first time from 1974. So for 46 years, it was totally closed. I found another potential entrance to the territory. Also, it's still blocked by the fence with barbed wire. Here is a bit different view. These constructions most definitely were grocery stores or some kind of local markets. Villas, villas, houses. That's pretty much it. And guess what is it? This is the checkpoint of United Nations that protect this area. Quite a lot of streets are visible from there. And if there is somebody and if I try to sneak there, I would be fucked up. Another former checkpoint of the abandoned part of Barosha. Well, again, as you can see, it borders an ordinary street. But sadly, because of the bark wire, it's kind of challenging to get inside. It's kind of a high rise in pretty decent condition. Uh, but it's likely to be empty inside. Incredibly transparent water of Mediterranean Sea neighbors the closed town of Farosha. A person from the restaurant told me that there is an entrance to this uh, abandoned territory a bit ahead from here. But there is also a path straight through the fence, so I guess that would be fine if I'll try to get straight here. It's a bit sketchy. Oh. So here we are, in the abandoned city. So, seems that we are in now. Let's try to get upstairs. On the second floor of a hotel I found this kind of a room with 
uh, things. I managed to get into the room with absolutely incredible viewpoint on Mediterranean Sea. This is outstanding, wow. I wish I had known that the entrance here is totally free and it's easy to walk by just following this path. The buildings are in, some are ruined, some are in pretty reasonable condition. And technically when nobody sees you, you can sneak inside. In my opinion, this is one of the best examples of the usage of abandoned places. They kind of back it to life without actually backing it to life, you know? They just allowed people to walk, to ride bike here, uh, and that's it. But that's pretty much enough. It's actually both positive and negative that we are now here. On the one hand, it's obviously advantages because this place is now accessible for numerous people and they can observe such wonderful area. But the disadvantage is that it's kind of lost its atmosphere, so it's no longer that a kind of hidden gem that you want to get somehow. I want to pay attention to this house, because there is a person standing on the top, who looks at a big binocle, and, видимо, he is looking at what is happening in the middle. I don't even exclude that he could have seen me as I was walking through this hotel, because he was just... The galore of English-speaking signs uh, is explained by the fact that Cyprus is a former English colony. This road is not accessible, it's only available for United Nations cars. It would be twice more cool to walk around this area if buildings were not empty. Sadly, there is almost nothing left because it was Wrapped within these 46 years. So the publicly accessible territory is over here and uh, to go further you need to cross this tiny fence which is <laughs> it's not a question so I guess we will walk some back streets. So having crossed another kind of a fence I managed to end up near this wonderful cathedral. All right I guess it's high time to walk some back streets without tourists. I left the path and so far so good. I do like the architecture of this building. It seems that formerly there used to be a swimming pool or something. Let's check it out. Sadly, I don't speak Greek. So I'm not exactly sure what was here. It looks like a garage or some service room. But pretty massive, like a hangar. I'm quite surprised that they allow tourists to walk around such massive area. And even if you only consider places that are allowed to visit, there is a lot of them. You need to spend hours and hours walking around. I have finally reached the dead end of this road. Uh, it was another checkpoint of United Nations. So seems to be seems to be the end of these adventures in Cyprus. That was wonderful and interesting. I didn't expect to explore such a large-scale area of this abandoned district. So I'm pretty much satisfied with it and amazed and impressed, <laughs> any adjective.